Hey, True Believers, Anglantine here with another episode of Comic Book Origins, where we explore the first appearance of popular superheroes, or in this case, the MF Enterprises Captain Marvel. Yes, it's Captain Marvel Months. That's what I'm doing right now, guys. And uh, you know what? Created by Myron Fass, who also did Eer Eerie Publications, that's about all I've got on it. Seriously, beyond that, the only information I could find was... This has nothing to do with Marvel or DC <laughs> or Fawcett. Yeah, I, I'm serious. That is just it. Everything else I found on him was stuff that you would find in the comic books itself. And I, I usually don't give that information because I'm about to check out the comic book itself. So for the Captain Marvel that we would all like to forget, we are about to remember. And without further ado, let's get this party started. Okay, as an issue of full transparency, I was not able to find this book uh, on the Digital Comic Museum, so I had to piece it together. It's a 45-page comic. We're going to focus on the very first story in the book, which is about 15 pages, but it's actually missing one. So once again, I just wanted to be completely honest about that. All right, just like all, all the other times, we're going to be taking a look at the cover first. Now, up in the uh, far left corner, we're going to see the words Captain Marvel. Now, if you miss this, don't worry, because in big, bold letters right in the center, you may see the words Captain Marvel as well. Don't want you to miss it. That's what it's there for, to identify the book. We all know this. Uh, <laughs> okay, April 66, uh, 25 Center. Okay, for 45 pages. All right, pretty good, right? Uh, so anyway, we're looking at basically what turns out to be a wish list of anything you would ever want to put on a cover. First, you have the hero. Hold still, Billy. I'll save you. Split! Which I guess is what he shouts when his arm comes apart in two different places, not just one. Okay. Okay. I'm not, not judging, not judging. And we have what looks like a, uh, an electric cyclops that's, that's coming down on Billy and that's what Captain Marvel's trying to save him from. But if you notice, Captain Marvel's coming with a whole bunch of water towards said electrical being while Billy is strapped to something metal. I think Captain Marvel's about to do more harm than good is what I'm saying. There's some sort of uh, invasion going on, I guess, because you've got spaceships outside with a guard who I guess is going to shoot through the glass of a particular spaceship. I hope they're not in space. That will end up bad for everybody. And I really would hate to see the robot with the Fu Manchu get sucked out into uh, the abyss. Yeah, there is a robot with a Fu Manchu. Now, there's also a robot without one. So I'm wondering if it's kind of like the Starbelly Sneeches. The ones with the Fu Manchu are a little higher class than the uh, ones without. Because, you know, they have no Fu Manchu on Lars. And, of course, it says something about Plastic Man. We're not going to be paying attention to that. But when it comes to craziness, the splash page, man, come on, look at this. You've got Captain Marvel doing somersaults around himself while his arms, legs, feet, hands, and even fingers are split off. And it has nothing to do... In the bottom corner, we've got his torso holding his own head. And it has nothing to do with what's going on because it's him waking up holding his head. Oh my gosh, who am I? Where am I? I don't know this. So as Captain Marvel explores the house that he's in, odd, the house is empty, but it has a clinical look. Is, is this a hospital? Hospital. I seem to recall one somewhere else. People around me, they were talking about a great achievement. What was it? In a moment, we will all know. This will be a great day for science. All hope for the generations to come is tied up in him. There is no time for failure. Ah, he stirs. That is good. Success. It worked. Even the puzzled expression on his face. Marvelous. That's it. We'll call him Captain Marvel, the human robot. It was a jolt just to learn the truth. I'm a robot? Why did they create me? Why me? And how did I get to this house? Can't think, but there must be an answer to why they gave me Donald Trump's haircut. So we cut to... Captain Marvel going into the library because after a headache, that's what one does. And I swear to God, I'm not making this dialogue up. Perhaps I'll find the answers in this room. The library room. He actually says that. 
I kid you not. So anyway, he says, well, there's a book on astrophysics by Marvel. It's too high. I can't reach it. And then he yells out, split. And then I hate panels like this, man, because it happened so much in the Silver and Golden Age where he is literally saying, my hand, it flew from my arm. It's grabbing my book. And then he yells, Zam, my hand has rejoined my arm. And what do you see? The hand flies out, grabs the book, the hand comes back. Yeah, we get it. So he wonders, whoa, wait a second, how did I know how to say that? And he goes, wait, it must have happened at the hospital, you think? And so we flash back where the doctors tell him, now say the word split. And he yells split, yeah, I popped apart. And we could see that, thank you very much. And then of course he tells him, Zam is going to bring your, our, our, your pieces back together. Which literally, if you could... Look what we just saw. Every bit of information that's given to us from watching Cap Marvel and the Doctor together was given to us three panels before that. So, what a waste of a page. And they continue to practice. He pops off his arms, pops off his fingers, his legs, and the Doctor says, Now send your head on a tour of the city. And Cap Marvel thinks to himself, Everything seems broken like something terrible has happened. Now he thinks this. While his head is outside, and you see the, the head return, and the doctor says, as if he just heard his thoughts, it did. We are victims of war. That is why you were created, for the good of man. Because of war, our planet will be destroyed. All but we'll, we'll discuss that another time now. Go back to the exercises. I'm going to stop talking about what may make an interesting story, and we're just going to send your separated body pieces around town a little bit more. I'm beginning to feel embarrassed that I decided to present this to you. I really am. This is a really bad comic book. Because the next page, he's like, Okay, now you're going to try it again. We got four people running at you. What you going to do? Split! And his arms and legs fly out. And he's like, Why do I even need to do this? And he's like, To, to, de to defend yourself. Are you freaking serious? The hell? Why? I, I'm adding that are you serious bit. It's like, come on, guys. Really? That's where you're going to go with this? So the doctor says, hey, you got to remember to rejuvenate your energy or your powers will be useless. And the robot goes, hey, how will I do that? And I'm thinking, I don't know, sleep? It's the, everybody in the world is the same way. And the doctor explains to him that the way he replenishes his energy is by rubbing himself. And really? That kind of puts me to sleep. And then there's a big explosion. He's like, oh my gosh, we're at war. There's no time. We have to get you out. Take these little girly booties. They're astro boots. It'll enable you to fly through space. Hurry. Really, will it enable him not to, like, implode? Uh, leave this place... In you is preserved the knowledge of our people. Use it to help others. Goodbye and good luck. Then, from 1,000 miles up, I watched the planet that I was born upon disintegrate into a million pieces. Now I'll have to find a new home. A new home, yes. I remember now. The planet was destroyed and I floated. His name is Captain Marvel. There's another guy named Plastic Man, and he's the lone survivor of an exploded planet. Yeah, there's no way this one wasn't going to court. So Captain Marvel's feeling really tired, so he rubs himself a little bit and then notices that there's a little boy coming over. A little boy comes in and says, Hi, golly, you sure got up early this morning. Uh, couldn't sleep. Is there something you want here? What? Say, you, you, you do look sort of funny. Have, have you gotten your friend Billy from the USA? USA? Oh, or, uh, sure, Billy. Come on in. Forgive me. It was a rough night. But why is the country the thing that sparks off the... Oh, you're Billy from the United States. Yeah, now I remember. Where are they? That, that's what uh, hits the, the little memory button on him. So in his confusion, Captain Marvel asks Billy, hey, where did we meet? And Billy says, right here in the good old United States of America. Doesn't say Wyoming or Disney, California, New York, whatever. Nope. United States of America. And then Billy recounts how Captain Marvel flew to the planet Earth, landed, and then sent his hand to stop Billy. They met and Captain Marvel decided to take on the secret identity of... Mr. Marvel, and that's how they became friends. Yeah, 
All of that information was also the information that we learned in the first five or six pages. This book is useless. <laughs> I'm sorry, but wow. And uh, yeah, Secret Identity, Captain Marvel to Mr. Marvel, nobody really broke their back over that one, did they? Not a lot of heavy lifting there. And what's weird, that's the end of the first story. Now, once again, this is kind of Golden Age, Silver Ages, so... Uh, yeah, it does have multiple stories in it, but that was it. That was the end of the first story. It was, it really was the same thing said over and over and over and over again. Caught in a vicious electrical storm, a lone airplane flounders helplessly with 50 passengers aboard who are about to be plunged into the greatest adventure of their lives as they encounter the invisible aliens. Inside the plane... Captain Marvel looks out at the nightmare engulfing him and silently thanks his lucky stars. He refused to take Billy along. I wonder if even I can survive this. While in the cockpit, the pilots puzzle at the strange way their instruments are reacting. Brother, will you look at that? Everything's bouncing around like crazy. Yeah, almost as though there's some sort of magnetic force. Arg! look. Now, I don't think he was meant to say it like a pirate, but everything's better with pirates. At least that's what my wife told me on our honeymoon to Somalia. So the plane goes into a big Stonehenge head, ends up in a black hole, and all the passengers are like, Oh my gosh, what's going on? Help me, help me! And even though the plane is in a direct 90 degree nosedive, they manage to pull up just in time not to blow up. Yeah, I have to apologize. While putting this together, I was unable to find a page 13, so moving on to page number 14. So we cut to Captain Marvel flying around. He's using his radar ears to try to find something. He comes across a gigantic computer. Upon investigation, Marvel is amazed by the Colossus-type computer in the middle of the jungle, and at the base it finds an ancient tablet with a forgotten language scratched on its surface. And once again, the dialogue basically mirrors what we just read. What's this? A tablet? But the writing belongs to a very ancient civilization. Must find a key to this. Using his computer-like brain, Marvel manages to find a key to the writing in seconds and unfolds the story contained thereon. We are doomed race. Doomed by our own foolish acts by our probing into the infinite. We attain greatness, miraculous powers of super-civilizations on whatever world we colonized, yet we still cannot conquer on how to make men's shirts. Then, one day, we discovered that we weren't alone, that we were merely on the other side of the curtain, the curtain that separated our civilization from another, on the other side of the fourth dimension. We tried to communicate to extend our hand in peace, but our ships were fired upon, and we were destroyed by those creatures. And now, as I write this, I am the only one left, but in this giant machine rests the storehouse of man's knowledge. I'll be immortalized. And that's where it ends. Strange. Such an advanced civilization used tablets to write on. Yeah, no kidding. This really, really doesn't make sense. Yeah, so, and he even says, it's, it's stranger they write on the tablets when they built just a giant, this giant computer. Yep. That's the uh, 60s for you. They thought computers were going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and not smaller and smaller. And thusly, as Captain Marvel is walking around the computer, he finds a panel and flips a switch, first walking through a dark tunnel. Then suddenly, the room was flooded with light. As Marvel enters the corridor, an onion, what the hell is that? It looks like a Taco Bell burrito gained sentience. Call Rob Liefeld. We found what stole all of his character's feet. Looks like a half-used tampon decided to revolt and walk away. All right, it's the rule of threes. Back to work. So the alien tampon says, Oh, you will pay for your curiosity, and drops a dome, a glass dome, over Captain Marvel, and Captain Marvel's like, Oh, this is what you did with the other civilizations, and I'm gonna escape by using my laser eyes, you know, that we've already established he had. I mean, I know about the split, but did, did they mention laser eyes and I missed something? Well, anyway, Captain Marvel escapes. Suddenly, Captain Marvel's surrounded by a bunch of giant heads. That's it. Close in a little more, keep coming more. On a mental command, Captain Marvel's body separates with the force of a battering ram into his would-be captors. Split! 
with his laser beam, Marvel cuts a... Okay, I see what he did. They, they kind of skip a panel here, but now he's flying around. He's shooting a laser beam, creating a huge ditch, causing the aliens to fall. The ditch is too wide. I'm falling. Maybe if we didn't have these spaghetti arms, we could save ourselves. And with a mighty zam, Captain Marvel's body comes together as one of the heads presses a button that th sends an electric shock field over Captain Marvel. What kind of being is this that can absorb 100,000 volts of electricity and still move? The voltage is increased, and soon even Captain Marvel begins to waver. But Captain Marvel sees a trap door exactly on the space that he is standing. <laughs> and he opens it and crawls. Why do they even have that feature? It doesn't make sense. The only place it goes to is right outside the wall. And there's a little hole there. It's not like it's a secret or anything. Any animal could crawl up into that. You have no idea. This is... Oh, I know the book is bad, but this is ridiculous. Quite an escape hatch. Wonder why they don't follow me. Probably too narrow, <laughs> you think? You saw them. You know it's too narrow. Come on, this book is so bad. <laughs> so anyway, he decides to go to the plane. He's surprised to see that the alien heads are there and they're hurting all the people together. There is no need for alarm. We do not intend to harm you, unlike the other civilization that we completely wiped out, provided you tell us who the electric one is. Electronic one of our passengers? Uh, sing peculiar but uh let me check the list all passengers are accounted for except one a captain marvel because he signed it captain marvel and we were like hey that must be a real name i don't know what happened to him ah then he is the one now if you will follow me there is a simple service only you can perform for us and bring your emergency repair equipment with you uh all right they're returning to the computer. Something tells me there's trouble ahead for those people, unless I help. So Captain Marvel runs toward the computer, and later, inside the mechanical brain, As soon as the others are taken care of, I'll show you what needs repair. Ah, now this hatch needs to be sealed permanently. We would do it ourselves, only we're too big to handle such a small job. Besides, we do not have the tools for it, and that is why we need your help. Also, my arthritis is acting up. I'm all head and knees. You would think that'd be an advantage. It's not. All right, Ben, you heard the man. Get with it. Roger, but the whole situation is mighty queer. Yikes. That did not age well, now did it, kids? This computer is years ahead of ours, yet they haven't any tools? And what happened to Marvel? Something tells me they're putting us on. This is a stall. The Earthlings are suspicious of us. Yes, I too can read their thoughts. They said it out loud, dumbass. Okay, big George Bush alien head. That hatch is sealed. Nothing could get in or out. Good. Then come along and join the others. And so the giant heads decide to reunite the pilots with their other passengers. They're being held hostage unless Captain Marvel surrenders. One of the pilots, though, refuses to go down without a fight, and he lifts a, a flamethrower, a welder to him, I guess, and the giant head just slaps it out of his hand and says, Wait a second, we're stuck outside of our own dimension, and we're trying to get back, and we think Captain Marvel can help. And the pilot says, Well, we'll help you. And Captain Marvel overhears this, and he says he'll help as well, but only when the pilot and the passengers get back to the plane, and when they do, the big heads say, Hey, look, there's a crack in the computer, and that's what letting all the electricity out, so Captain Marvel agrees to help and splits his body so he can fit inside the crevice. While inside, Captain Marvel uses his detached limbs to repair the wires and stop the electrical leak. That's what they call it, I swear to God. I'm not messing around here. Then Captain Marvel calls his body back, Zam! And uses his immense strength to close up the crevices. But unfortunately, it isn't enough. They still need more power before the big heads can get back to their own dimension. So Captain Marvel uses his computer brain to figure out that they need 12 boosters, whatever the hell those are, to get the computer running. The big head's like, hey, okay, we need 12 boosters. How the hell are we going to get that? And how's it going to power up if we do? And Captain Marvel, who was earlier brought down by electricity, decides, I know, I can use myself as a conductor. And he goes up into the sky and his electricity is falling down and he's grabbing onto it. 
to send it into the building and they're like, hey, you got enough power, that's awesome. And the big heads notice that it's about to work and so they all get onto the platform of teleportation now. And the giant heads notice it's about to work and they crowd onto the takeoff platform and turn all switches to on position. It's only a matter of seconds now. Followed by an electronic glow, the giant heads begin to vanish into their own dimension. It works. We're going home at last. Meanwhile, outside, Captain Marvel, as the conductor of the natural lightning, begins to feel the strain. Can't hold on much longer, getting weaker. But all those heads have made the journey into their own dimension and are barely visible in the sky. I'm passing out. He helped us. Now we must help him. Now let's pass through the plane. Deposit Marvel inside the plane. It is done. Goodbye, friend. And later, how did I get here? The last thing I remember is falling through space in the heads. They must have helped me. Thanks, wherever you are. There you go, gang. The first appearance of Cap Marvel. Before I get on with my little review here, I'd like to thank all the patrons, the names that are going to be going by, the Ko-Fi supporters, the whole nine yards. Thank you very much, guys, for helping me make videos for you. If you would like to help out the channel, go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi. This is the first appearance of Cap Marvel, the MF Publications, the one you probably never heard of. And I got to say, the book sucked. It was a tough one. This video took forever for me to do because I just didn't want to go on. <laughs> it's really sad. Uh, it really was. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for making it this far. What did you think of the comic? What did you think of the video? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And if you like the videos... The comic book origins, just click on one of the boxes that are pop up here. Like, thank everybody who's already done that to everyone, all of the true believers. Thank you very, very much for watching.